Once Australia continues to wake up from its coronavirus-induced slumber, more zoos and aquariums across the country are beginning to reopen. And the iconic home of the Crocodile Hunter Australia Zoo is set to join the ranks, receiving visitors for the first time since lockdown from tomorrow. Joining us now is Terry Irwin. Irwin. Hey, Terry. Oh. Good morning. I've also got Brandy. <laughs> Brandy and family fire. behind you. There's the, the whole kit and caboodle this morning. Um, how challenging has the yeah. last two months yeah. been for you in the zoo? I feel like I've been holding my breath for two and a half months. It's been epic. So it's been a lot of working on reducing costs and increasing revenue wherever we can with online sales and so forth. But you have to keep in mind it's just not Australia Zoo on its own. We have a number of suppliers that are dependent yeah. on us. Mm -hmm. We have conservation projects around the world and about half a million acres of conservation property that still has to be taken care of. So it's been epic. Hey Terry, we've missed the animals. Have they missed us? <laughs> they, the animals have missed us so much. Like for the first couple of days, they were like, what is it? Are we closed for Christmas? And now all you do is see, you go into the kangaroo area and the kangaroos all come up and they're just wanting a scratch, wanting a snack, wanting some attention. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's pretty cool to have people come in and say, you're beautiful and I love you all day. So they miss that too. When you say wanting a scratch and a feed, it's like my co-host. <laughs> I thought you were talking oh, about Carl. Wow. <laughs> Don't tell everyone that. That's right. Those attention-seeking fingers. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked, but it's true. Um, Terry, one of the big parts of your business too, and I know I noticed in the last couple of weeks um, that the Premier, um, Anastasia Palaszczuk, was at your zoo or, or thereabouts. Um, I know that the big part of your your visitors there are from interstate uh, and international I mean you must be very hungry for them to start up again well it was interesting because we saw everything happen in reverse so when international borders closed our numbers dropped by 30 percent and when state borders closed our numbers dropped by a further 60 percent so reopening is fantastic and I understand that we have health concerns but we also have current limitations and opening everything up instantly is going to be challenging for restaurants that can only take 20 people and all the limitations for biosecurity areas. You know, the, a lot of the Cape is closed. So we need to start getting timings right and open the borders with a strategy where health comes first and then the economic recovery is realistic. So yeah, it's going to be a long road. You got to think after the GFC, we ourselves were eight years recovering from the global financial crisis. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a lot bigger than that. So it's going to be a long time and we've got to be careful not to get fatigued with the whole COVID thing because that's when we'll go backwards. Well, yeah. I tell you what, there's a Barney on behind you over there with the giraffes. See, I thought it was a party. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a party to me. But, Terry, we can't wait to come back. And the, the good thing about Australia Zoo, it is huge, so social distancing is, is, is an easy one to take care of. Yes, and you don't have to social distance with Brandy. If you need a hug, she's here. Scratch. In those, in those scratch. All right. OK, good to chat to you. <laughs> Terry, we'll, uh, we can't wait to visit. <laughs> Sorry, Carl was just needing a scratch. <laughs> I seriously, what Sorry. I have to put up Good with luck. sometimes in the morning. Good luck, Terry. <laughs> is, that, is that directed at me or at you? No.